but something was left in fairy when I came back over the line. My hair, they say, is still golden. My boots are soft and fine. My dancing is ever as light as the sun. My stillness retains its shine. But something was left in fairy when they brought me back over the line. I doffed my hat to Jill today. She promised she still was mine. Her mother drove me into the yard for a blessing upon the kine. Her father gave his forgiveness over a glass of mulberry wine. But something was left in the mist when they fetched me back over the line. The priest, he gives a flinch of fear and the flick of a warding sign. The children play out a game of me with giggles and wonderment in their eyn. The haughty mistress in the hall has summoned me there to dine, to ask me what was in fairyland and what has been left behind. And are there golden apples grown and grapes of silver on the vine? Do the handsomest lords of fairy dance? And do they number nine? Does one of them step away at last? Does one of those princes pine for a mistress all of raven hair who was snatched back over the line? Then her breast is thrown against my own, her hands in my hair entwine. Her lips are scrabbling at my mouth for a taste of a breath divine. The tears upon her cheek do fall and mingle a while with mine. But we part unhappy and lost, for it ever has never strayed across the line. The doctor was called for the mistress, amazed at her sudden and sharp decline. I took myself to visit with Jill, found her feeding her goats and swine, a light surrounding her, bright and sure, ran ribbons around my spine. Told me this, perhaps, is where I belong. Upon this side of the shining line. Should I take that treasure that never was took, nor lost, across the line? Hello. Welcome to Poetry Show, number 35, which is something I've been doing since New Year's. For a while it was every other day. More recently there's been interruptions of work and house hunting. But things are a bit more settled now, so fingers crossed it may well return to every other day. We'll see. And I've been reading poems of my own. And when I can, some poems, my friend, just to for change of voice. I had a, a, a yearning, a, a longing to return to fairyland. So many poems of these last couple of years have touched on this folklorish, mythical place. Without much reason or knowledge of why I felt I wanted to write about them. Perhaps it's a sense of being somewhere else. Perhaps it's something to do with lockdown. Perhaps it's a sense of, for all our words and definitions, and for all our science and stories, 
there are things still left in between, missed out, things unacknowledged, things other. So that was a poem just, um, that last one I did, the shining line, referring to the border, the border line between here and that other world. And it was a tale of a return from fairy. And a few of these speak of that, having been there and come back. But here's a few that talk more about the going in. This one called A Welcome. I stepped away backward from pursuers into cloud and haze into fairy. Touch became something only I could feel. Never noticed again what they hunted, it had no sound anyway, no voice that could be heard, only listened to. And now I was in breath, held, turning slowly, everything is turning, everything is slow at the edge of things. It was the tiniest pinch on the tip of my little finger, two hands clasped like a cup around an acorn, shy, and a pair of eyes tender like a moon, and a moon on water louder than a moon with their questions and a greater gravity. Holly prickled in the, in the look, bramble catching. This thing would hang on me, scrabbling at my arm, perching on my shoulder, pointing to a shade between the silver cumulus and the slate cirrus scratch. Step, its fingers said, there is enough, you do not need much. The cloud arranged itself again like a stomach. I could hear the babble of a faraway place, but here the light was music. Every gaze I saw was a fall, every figure was a sting of tears in the corner of an eye. There was approach and it was safe. There was a kiss from their lips to my cheek. And it was a rival. There was a drink offered. The first one to speak said, welcome. The second one, there is blood, but it is not yours. The third was clambering out of a rent in my sternum. We must put honey in here, honey is wise. The fourth wanted to hear me speak, but waited. The fifth said, the rest that you need is being prepared. The sixth one to speak told tales that would let the tears know when to stop, when to trip to laughter. The seventh and the eighth shared a look and said, We love you. The ninth. The ninth wore a crown. The ninth wore a beauty that brought me to myself. The ninth dressed me in their gown, and when they spoke, Then the giant women took me sleeping, 
from the garden where I wept, and laid me in a soft and golden bed. And there were six in number, ringing me like towers in the night, and singing down to me in, in my slumber. And one was blue, and told me of the deep, and one was green as mossy stone, and one was yellow-haired, and left me not alone. And one was black, but riddled through with stars, and one had all the rusted shades of red, and one was still unseen. And stood they then in silence round my head, and as I dreamed there then about my love, her small and lily feet, her brown cascade of hair, and the man she would meet at the breaking fair. I felt the gentle rough of all their hands urging me to calm, untroubled rest, and shearing off the unkind wedding bands. So when I woke, amidst the rain and morning fire, Standing free and naked in my age, she looked up once and made me her desire. That was something called The Seventh, and before that, a poem called Arrival. One or two of those I've read, read quite recently, but most of these haven't been read for a while. Some of them, not at all. Something about fairy that speaks of the other, of the missing, of that which is not caught by our words and thoughts and our concepts. Still within, perhaps, Fairyland, this one called Fairy Love. They are dressed in sky colours, cloud, and in fabrics you'd fall into. Little touches of he or she, your favourites. And they stand alone by silver bark and shimmer where the earth swells enough to discourage the casual climber. There's only ever just the one with their hair alive to air and lightness sometimes leaning or else reclining on a stone, and they watch. Often you will not notice eyes being like reflected sun. Those strange moments when you feel beautiful. So that being of a time that passes and of a place that set doesn't seem the mortal burden. And you can marry and never count the cost. Just. They were the other one you wanted. Of the heath, of the wild. Stood alone in colours, just. Impossible to reach. It may be something of the inner world, the inner dream that we're speaking of. Although certainly people speak of actual encounters outside of themselves. It may speak of a kind of paradise or blissful place that we've known or would like to know. 
This is something called moon line. Line of white, threaded long across the nine waves. Silver gleam of sweat riding the white-backed stallion. Glow of fairy gloaming through the glamour of a full bright night. Fog shining fair over fields, thoroughfare to Elfland. The loose stone door, made bare and blazing by Oberon's hand. Mound under moor's edge, mounted for the sake of a poet's sight. And on her smooth and softening thigh, with gloves removed, a stroke of moonlight will also lead the way into paradise. Don't cry. No, do not cry. You shall be there by and by. By and by. How are we doing? Hello. I have to say it's true that I don't always know who's out there if anyone's watching or not <laughs> it's fine if you are or if I'm not um, ah I guess Carlos thank you uh, sometimes people leave me a message or give me a thumbs up and then that's one way that I do know that someone's there so thank you Carlos afternoon to you too hope you're well so Rather than this being just my poetry, where I can, I've been introducing poems um, by a friend of mine, by friends, um, of their published works. And today I want to introduce somebody who I don't know personally, I just know them online. Um, I read their book and uh, wanted to get in touch. So we don't know each other virtually. Um, and it's someone called Jessica Mayhew, with her book. Longship. And what drew me to Jessica's book um, from the start was that a deal of it, as the title suggests, touches on Old Norse myth and legend, which has a slightly different feel and taste to fairy lore, although there's some overlap. And if you've been reading me or listening to me, you'll know I often write about such things as well. So it was a joy to find somebody else writing about it and what's more, writing about it well. So I'd like to read two of hers from her book. These two are related in that they're both concerned with the same story, a story of the presaging of the Ragnarok, when the god Baldur, the faultless god, with nightmares, foresees his own death and his mother, Frigg, travels across the world, swearing, getting an oath from everything to do him no harm. And so Baldur becomes essentially invulnerable. The only thing, the only flaw to this is that there was one thing that Frigg did not ask for an oath, and that was mistletoe. And so it worked out that through a mistletoe, mistletoe dart and through Loki's trickery, Balder's brother, his blind brother, kills Balder. So this is one poem, which is called Balder, the immortal god. Dusty quartz and ore, bolted through with gold. Raw wood, oak and apple, sap wet, speared, all swore me no ma. I'd kiss flames from flint, dredge water for dowsing, 
from the hooves of the waves and the ships that saddled them. I let the bear nuzzle my neck, mouth foaming and fanged. Bolder, I leapt from cliffs, woundless, I winged up the high pines, swung from rookeries. From there I could watch in secret my blind brother, face turned to the sunset, feeling the night come on like a bruise, a gentle harm. Balder exultant in his invulnerability. And related to that is poem Frigg, where his mother speaks. Like quaking aspen, my hands rooted together every time I asked. Eelgrass, egret, tufted lynx, reindeer smoking breath, hair flexed, one eye bold, heart thundering, fox, jaws slick with yoke, sympathised she was a mother too. Soon my knees knew the ground again, pressing, begging gullies in the wet grass. Daisies soothed the bruises and poppies languished, nodding. When I climbed the rocks, each stumble was the shock of knowing what was coming. Nettles nipped my ankles. Oath it, if not for my boy, then... When I spoke, my tongue split through, and I tasted the blood of what I was asking. The mistletoe trembling, too small to swear. Perhaps it was that moment of compassion for the small and immature mistletoe. Finally used as the arrow that killed Valder. So that is both of those from Longship by Jessica Mayhew, published by Eyewear. And I'll put the details of that in the comments at the end. To return to Fairyland. In the first half I touched on some of the desire, the bliss, the, the hope, the safety of being there, or that state of being, feeling safe. This is one called The Return, about the desire to return there, if we only could. This fog has too much taste of iron. There is a catch now in my throat. It brings a wheeze at the end of every breath. There is no sweet grass underfoot. In other times, the step was soft, giving. There was nothing that kicked back or scattered. I do not think I am on the right path. There is no call of music or little laughter on the air. And the air was warm then and silver. When I trod it before so simply. When the way forward was a hand clasping pull into a forward blooming heart. To find my way back. This time, fairy has a price. Slough off the flesh. Leave blood behind. No bones either before the king's throne. Because there's often a sense of being divorced from that thing we're yearning for, the thing that we need to be touched as children or as lovers, as dreamers, but then tasting 
the real solid world is yearned for. Or perhaps we see something there that those who have never touched fairy would rather deny. This is a poem called Seely. Seely being a word for fairy, for the fairy court, and from which we derive the modern word silly. Silly, those who are touched by the fairies. And those of us that manage out of choice or need for health to find our way again out and away and through that velvet silver mist which gleams a scuttle dream upon the field the way between and calling where the light shows more bright than any sun has seen but will not fall on earth from which the old kingdom music beats like a heart, but never heard here on this further side. And those of us that do, finding sudden hunger never known in the womb, and a chill within the lung, and the iron that has kept us never truly part of there, heavy sudden in our blood. Those of us are trembling, stepping into here, out of mist, out of clarity of crystal air, of golden eyes and ebony hair, of fingers interlocking words of carefree devotion in the ear, and all the morning moan and keen despair of leaving it all behind. Sickening in our bellies. Some of us can only crawl. Those of us coming back. To time. To hope for return to home, perhaps. Stumble over thistle. Find ourselves shadowed by the wall. Built by our past and fearful masters and their carls, across the fields they know, along the bright and shining line, to keep folk from fairy out. And those of us who manage to return behind We are the ones they say did fall, did waste away, the damned forsook the world and ruled ourselves unfit. Believe their fairy tale? The kindly ones themselves were never so cruel. That sense of exclusion, if somehow, for some way, you go beyond the known world and need to come home, bringing things that others would rather not know or see. And perhaps there's good reason for that. Who knows? Because this poem, The Blue Jacket, is inspired by fairy story, fairy folklore of Scotland. The fairy well at Logie, Stirlingshire, is, it seems, inhabited by such a fellow wearing a bright blue jacket, sometimes seen by travellers on the road. Travelling the road to Sheriff Muir, you might catch beside the well a flash of, was it blue? Who can tell? Feel a thirst you never knew you had before. 
and take a step into the dell to fill your hands with water clear, cool and dancing. Bring it near to drink beside the... What's that smell? And who's the little fella here? In tailor jacket, blazing blue and golden buckles on his shoe and grinning in no ways sincere. Talking business as if he knew you well in single days before the love and childer came your ways and on your brow the ridges drew. And can you believe the things he says? The water dribbling from your hand, your tongue as dry as sand, still caught within his craze. Oh, take your drink, you thirsty man, his belly rolling. Then he's strolling, calling, will you join the band? As fellas come with colours bowling out from all the open hill, with drums and pipers blowing shrill and in no ways consoling. Water in your fingers still, but gone almost and nearly lost, you raise the last and drink your fill. What magic can this water boast? A single drop's now to fill your belly anyhow, but wonder at the cost. The fairy dance upon the brow, the rolling, rollicking, sharp and glad and nearly mad, departing in the glow. The fellow in his jacket clad, and quiet as it was before, you on the road to Sheriff Muir. With a thirst you never knew you had. Just two more for you. Let's see now. This might be a strange one, I don't know. I haven't spoken of going to fairy, whatever it may be, and returning maybe, thinking, traveling alone, thinking of something unique, and realizing that many other people find their way into some place similar. This is something called How Jealous I Was. How jealous I was that others had crossed into fairy, riding the roads, at times admitted, at times abandoned, those never done moments of not being there, while they were there. How jealous I was bitter, and all the attention at their return, the fetting of heroes. I was there too. I had nothing but poo-poo for my troubles. Now everyone knows, now fairy has washed over the world, and it is difficult to walk through a world enchanted, where all are as seely as I, and they're dancing with fairies and elves, while I am too old now. How jealous I was that fairy had crossed into all until I saw through the glamour the trolls and row dancing till blistering songs turned to wails in my ears. How jealous I was they came to me then for fine iron, asking how cold did I wish the blade, how numbing the edge, they came in a blaze of sunshine, already stone. For a moment it fired, but soon, endless days made a river. It softened to dancing, singing rounded to gentle pebbles. Listening to fairy before, was to sit so quiet, a bird would settle by your ear and whisper. Was stepping so lightly, the leaves would lift you. 
listening before, was feeling the sky in your blood. The silver condense on the edge of your eyes, was seeing all ages on a face. Now, the geese honk, 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 and the little ones skitter by fearless. How jealous I was. Take it, please, you're greener than me. I have been leaning on this tree till I felt it lift and fall, raise itself and settle like a cat, like a snore. And I stayed there so quiet till I thought it would forgive me. How it laughed. I could chuckle. The dregs of my envy want to bear me. But going through that magic door, I never stopped. I never stopped to wonder who had gone before. How jealous I was that others had crossed. So I've just one more for the end. A fairly recent one. One of the most famous stories in mythology of somebody returning from fairy. Although in this case it goes by the name of Tia Nanog. Is of the Fenian hero Oshin. Who went into fairy, who went into Tia Nanog to be with his fairy lover, Neve, stayed there for longer than he anticipated, and finally wanting to look again at the Irish hills, took a horse back with the warning not to let herself touch the earth, in case the centuries that he has lived catch up on him. And in one version of the story, as he travels, his, well, he steps down to the earth. In another, his saddle falls and he falls to the earth. And in another, he encounters St. Patrick. And they converse about the two worlds. So this to finish is called Oshin's Homecoming. I'll put the video of this onto the timeline after if you want to watch it back and I'll put a set list into the comments and a link to previous readings if you want to have a look at those. So now I leave you with this. Oshin's Homecoming. I am only now waking from the dream. I think I have been lost. The silver mist at my back, the only song to tell me where I was. The silver of this white horse between my legs, the only touch. Only now do I remember memory. How thoughts can fall as white stones to make a house, a wall, or such as will keep a living safe. There were no stones on the silver side. Though here I see silver grey, smooth amidst the... Yes, it is grass. And dry stone barriers around this fallow land. I am looking for the colour here. I have intimations of fruit and colour, music. I think I have been dancing. I thought I was kissed. I have eyes in my eyes, behind my tears, my clouded mind. 
The horse stands four square. It does not bend its neck to taste the grass. Yes, it is grass. Will not take another step. Only now do I remember weight that brings the thought to fall as white stone to bring a worth to gold makes me something this horse must carry. I am looking for the touch of earth, hearing in my ear, do not allow the touch of earth. And such a song like what the shell has kept of the western ocean, like what the night has kept of the dancing fox. Only now do I remember time, allowing thoughts to be said. White stone tumbling in a scree, a white corpse upon the hill, a doorway in a white wall turned to face the sun in the middle time of the year, and all the fairy tribes are leading her. Here. And here is this man of holiness walking from the crowd, and now do I remember sound and voices now, do I remember need? He stops by my horse upon the grass. Will you not dismount? We have food for you and water. And at the altar rail we have wafer and wine and eternal life. And now I am remembering touch. On white stone, soft as feather down, soft as centuries turning, soft as a step onto grass. <laughs>